Hey guys, welcome to Moon Live. Matt Khalees here, Thursday night as usual. Um, tonight we're going to be doing some polar opposite stuff. I don't even know what the screen image is. You guys had to look at there for a moment. I apologize. It's like my sideburn. Um, anyways, it's not about my sideburns or lack thereof. But uh, tonight we're talking about a few new cool fly patterns that uh, are kind of... Well, I don't know if they're new, but anyways, James, hello, how are you doing? Um, so tonight we're, we're going polar opposites. I mean, you can't get more different than what we're doing tonight. It's going to be pretty fun. We're doing a steelhead pattern, again, as request, the Dirty Ho. Um, that's H-O-H, -H, after the Ho River up on the Olympic Peninsula. It's a pattern originated by Jerry French, who is one of the godfathers of all steelhead fishing. Um, and secondly, we're doing sort of a uh, acronymid pattern. Uh, I just named the lake effect. It's not a pattern that I'm claiming as my own. It takes great influence from uh, like the guys at Fly Fish Food, Tax Chronomid, any number of other chronomid patterns. So it's uh, it's a pretty cool pattern. I think we'll probably start out with that tonight, and you can time in a various color, size, shape, anything like that. <coughs> A uh, ho ho, Aaron, Max, thank you. I appreciate it. It's the uh, the big time from the Loon Outdoors. Um, so so let's jump up, get my ugly face off the camera, and we'll go we'll go vice vice time. So hopefully you guys are uh, having good luck out there. Look at that. That's a fly. It's really close to the camera, but it's incredibly small. Not my, uh, look at it, at least I didn't wear a black shirt tonight. So, I usually wear black. Huh. Oop. That's, uh, I tricked this thing into focusing all the time. Bingo. So, this is our little chronomid pattern. And it's really close to the fly fish food one. It uses much different material. It's kind of like tax chronomid, but darker. <clears throat> and the one thing that I did do, if you guys will notice, is it is a fluorescing pattern. Hey, Dennis, how's it going? Welcome. So, and, and we'll talk a little bit more about this fluorescing thing. Um, I, brought a, I brought a bottle of it to show you why. So I'm tying these on a clean camera hook, um, as you guys know um, from the description. Tonight, I'm going to try to tie a bigger one because... No offense, but uh, this is a small fly. Well, maybe it's about the same size. Whatever. <laughs> Not that small. Jeff wants to know if there's free hats for everyone watching. I wish I had that type of uh, type of power there, Jeff. <laughs> Matt Evers. Not that small. No, no, I photoshopped it live so you could think it was way bigger. Um, it's really a size 32, um, but that's all right. That's here nor there. <laughs> so, alrighty. So in the vise of a size 12 uh, clean camera style hook, and I'm actually going to be using a black thread. Go figure. Probably be in big trouble here in a second, so I probably should grab that before too long. But let me grab this box of thread here. Oh, there we go. So I needed something out of here and as usual, I move it. But that's alright. That'll hunt. I'm like half packed up right now. If anybody's on the west coast and going to the uh, International Sportsman's Expo that would be uh, tomorrow. I will be there tying and doing a UV cure three or four hour demo if you're interested. Small for a steelhead fly. Don't 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 worry, Brent. We have look at this fly eats him. It's we have a big steelhead fly going too. 
That's what I get for cleaning my desk. Absolutely. And putting things in organized fashion. Uh, <laughs> that's the second downfall there. So what I'm going to be using tonight for the body um, is it's a body quill from Vivas. And this is BQ1, also known as black. And what I really relate this to um, is going to be midge diamond braid but it's little tiny cousin um, so this is actually really like smaller than a 240 thread diameter I would say or about the same size but uh, so what I like to do is I just simply half hitch this stuff in and you can see I've just halved it over the thread and I'm going to leave it back here hanging off the, the tailing end of the device. Um, for my orange flashaboo from Hedron, I don't know what color orange it is, but you can see I just have a piece of orange flashaboo here. It's because it become, comes out of my Fire Tiger bag. So I can't advise you on the exact color that I'm using. Uh, I know here in California, like on the east side of the Sierras, uh, a lot of light grays, light blues, uh, bodied chronomids seem to work really well. Um, and our second body color is going to be this kind of cool earthen brown color. <laughs> um, and the brown color is 6987 if you're curious. It's probably one of the cooler flashy colors that I've witnessed. Orange. There you go. <laughs> H14 orange. Thank you Matt. I appreciate it. Um, so, yeah, don't ever clean your fly tying desk. I, I just got done doing a bunch of production stuff and it almost killed me to uh, have to work on that and shoot photos. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to advance this thread all the way forward to where we're going to build our, our head slash gill pattern. And you'll notice there's a slight offset here if I rotate the vise of where my flash is starting versus where my body quill is starting. And that's just going to be uh, that's just going to be so I can have a little bit of an area to work with. <clears throat> so you don't need to go too heavy duty with the body quill initially. But you do want to ramp up and taper. I want to have a nice slender body that's why there's so much trailing out here. And as you get out of the hook shank, it's going to uh, slow down a bit. Hey, Matthew, no problem, man. Which Matt? Matt Evers or me, Aaron? You're going to have to start clarifying with multiple people with the same name on the live stream. <laughs> I imagine you're talking to Mr. Evers. So you can see this doesn't build really at all. There's, it's such a low build material. Um, I use it in other colors for intruder bodies actually, like the little space in, in between. So I'm going to go ahead and trim that off because I'm going to uh, quadruple what's left um, that I've peeled off here to create the head of the fly. But now we're going to do uh, kind of some steel heady tie and stuff and just come in and start palmering in the segmentation it's a little bit hard for me to see I won't lie because it's it may seem very bright to you guys but uh, I can guarantee you in the tying cave at this moment it is very dark actually the camera has a better view of what I'm doing sometimes than I do which is really beneficial for me and I'm also going to save the brown for the top of the wing case. Um, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the orange and I'm going to, I'm going to use it as a follower. And I'm going to try my darndest, if I can see here, to pretty much just go halfway over the brown as best as possible, following the same segmentation pattern that I had previously created. 
and I wrap it forward and then I wrap back over so it locks in there super tight. <clears throat> oh wait, and there's and there's also Matthew Hillman. So we have three mats running in here right now. Aaron, you're gonna have to be on point. So uh, so what I like to use is some unicorn tears, aka fluorescing flow for this. Um, and the reason I like using the fluorescing flow is that it corrects the colors at depth. And we've been this stuff's been pretty much everywhere so far. Uh, and I can't complain. But you can probably start to see this pattern just glowing and fluorescing. So I think uh, the Flyfish Food Boys, I forget who ties if, it, if it's Curtis or Cheech. They're chronomid patterns. I believe it's Curtis. I should know, but I don't. Um, you know, he's using a Biot quill. So this is a, you know, probably a little synthetic variation on there on their pattern there. So you can see that thing really glows and pops. And again, it's going to color correct these oranges and browns that are going to get filtered out and help highlight them. Uh, I've found that some fish tend to quite enjoy this fluorescing business. Um, so next up I'm going to take our same body quill and I'm just going to tie it off to the side here and pin it back out of the way on the back of my vise. <laughs> All right, well, I guess that answers that, Mr. Evers. <laughs> and he's not even here to defend himself. That's, uh, that's unfortunate. So what I'm going to be using for the, the gills here is, a, is an iris thread. And... I don't know if you guys can see the color if I put it on the screen. This is an I-120. I call it fluorescent fire orange. And again, this is really similar to the body quill, with the exception of that it's not translucent. Um, and it's got a, it's got flash behind it, as you can see. And that looks a lot more orange on camera than I'm seeing it here. But that's all right. And I cut off about six inches, which is more than you would ever need for then need. we're just going to double it up and I'm going to put this right down on the bottom and it's alright if it comes back into the body a little bit because we're going to create that bubble head but that's going to create our gill plate and last but not least I'm going to bring over the the brown flashaboo. Work my thread forward. We'll pull out the body thread or the body quill, and we'll begin to wrap in the head of this fly. You guys can put gills on it. I never ever do. Um, maybe that's like hugely bad on my part, um, but. <clears throat> Like my mid or chronomid box is pretty sad if that's what's going down at a lake. I'll pull a cheech and just start throwing meaty streamers. So we'll discard that. We'll pull a wing case. Do you guys have the ISE show, the International Sportsman's Expo Expos back east? I've never been to one, so I'm kind of curious if anybody has ever witnessed this event it has a huge fly tying area though it's pretty pretty cool and then what we're going to do is we're going to wrap these gills from the bottom center like if you're looking at the front of the fly what I call that six o'clock position and we'll bring it forward and we'll bring it up here as well so there's two that end up being out there. Yeah, Brandon, the body quill is really 
I have like six patterns that I've been sending out with guides lately that pretty much the main focus of them is the use of the body quill. Um, so I totally dig it. It's good stuff. We'll throw whip finish in here and we'll bring back the unicorn tears. What I do is I just rotate that vise to get a nice even build. <laughs> uh, yeah, my daughter loves the purple light too. It's all she calls it, purple light. That's about it. And she steals it constantly and then I find it like three days later with the batteries completely dead. Um, lying in a corner somewhere. <clears throat> So that's about it, other than me leaving a little tiny speck of orange up here, which I don't think will hurt. We'll give you guys a slow rotation. You can see the top of the wing case, kind of a two-tone body, some gills popping in there. It's a little bright. Let's see if I can get it to unbright so you can see the gill in there. And that's kind of just a basic down and dirty chronomid pattern that will catch some fish. Mm. Cool. So next up is my variation on a that doesn't fit the screen on the dirty hoe. <laughs> Went a little overboard, overzealous. Um and so this is uh, basically, in my opinion, it's a it's a hybrid styled steelhead fly. It's part leech and part uh, intruder. It's kind of got an intruder front, leech back. Um, Max says 100% won't work. I, uh, I try. Sorry, Max. Um, <laughs> I like it. I like it. Good stuff. Um, and it's a cool fly. It's got a lot of movement. I put some extra stuff in there. I've actually seen Jerry tie these in kind of real life at a few shows. Got to talk to him. Um, and it's a it's a killer pattern. It's uh, very very cool. And I've knocked my beads over. That's great. <laughs> Let me grab beads really quick. Give me one second. I am special. I understand completely. <clears throat> I kicked the beads off the counter. Down. That was a crashing noise, which is intelligent when you're supposed to be tying stuff. So you can use a bead or you can also use um, a cone head uh, of your choice for these patterns. Tonight I'm just going to use a bead. And the biggest one, like a 3 16 works for me. You can roll with a tungsten bead, um, anything like that. These are just some beads from Hairline. Uh, a train wreck right now, Matt. I uh, dropped a few things, I guess, off the back of the desk. There's a lot of wires. <laughs> I, I, I understand, Aaron. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I'll show you guys my basic rundown on how I get this guy going. So, I have a Tiger Bard uh, Magnum bunny strip here um, and what I do with these is I'll sand them you know sand the fluff off the back sometimes but I like to split them and this pattern requests a split so I just put them in the vise and uh, carefully work the razor blade back towards my hand um, so you get Hey, I haven't blackballed you yet. I can I can click a button and it says ban user. <laughs> Don't worry about it. You can heckle all you want. I'm, I'm probably deserve it. Um, 
So what I like to do is I just I just strip them back, and uh, I'll try not to knock everything over in two weeks though, Matt. <laughs> um, so what I do is I get a good piece of what I'm going to feel you know I want for my my shank there, and what I'm using for my shanks is the uh, these are from OPST actually. This is their steelhead shank, and. What it is, it's just a cool upturned eye. It's a rounded eye. If you guys can, I'll get it closer so you can see. Um, they make a like a return eye as well, and so they work pretty darn well. What I do is I buy the long ones. So if I want to tie a bigger fly, I can. Or if I don't need all the extra meat and material, then I can cut them off. You know, I'll just end up, you always end up clipping shanks anyways when you're tying intruders. It's just the uh, nature of the beast. Yeah, I didn't even know that I was tying. There is super glue on my table for cuts, you are correct. Not above that. I saved the derm derma bond for my kids, though. <laughs> hey, it's totally how you use a vise. They're good for everything. Come on, Brandon. Steve, glad you're here. Welcome. <clears throat> so, you can use intruder wire um, or any sort of Dyneema type fishing line. I, with uh, bunny leech patterns, I prefer to use like a backing or something soft. My only theory behind that is this gets tied into the bunny, and Jerry has a very cool little way that he does that. I'll try to properly execute it, um, but uh, I'll just get it back there for now. So I'll wrap this all the way forward. I'll leave a little room by my head. You could pass through the eye. You can you can do whatever your favorite methodology is there. Uh, I tie lots of flies for friends going on pretty ridiculous trips and uh, if Tiger Taman don't pull this out I really hope that a steelhead won't ever pull it out as well. So I grab our the bunny that we're working with and I just strip it out and that just gives us a better surface to work with. Now, rabbit's a little bit slick as a material. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't go to the hospital. My, my wife is a hospital. So, that works out for me. I get no sympathy. Uh, so, what I do is I'll wrap it back or forwards, and then I bring it over once back. And the only reason I'm doing that is is it's going to create a really secure hey guy how's it going it's going to create a really secure bond so that tail over time effort um, pretty much everything is not going to uh, going to pop out there and we're going to pull um, our first dubbing loop here <clears throat> And inside of our first dubbing loop, we're going to do it in a little bit of a stage. But I'm going to use Silver Holographic and, wait, wrong hands, and Ice Dub Lavender. Yes, yes, I still have my EMT kit. <laughs> Uh, 
Absolutely. You never let go of your Actually, I'm still I'm still licensed even, Aaron. It's scary, right? So for our first dubbing loop, I've just stacked the silver ice dub on the lavender ice dub. Looks glue thread. Yes, I have everything. I'll be all right. <laughs> oh man. So what I do here is a lot of this is going to get hidden. So we'll just kind of come forward with it. Doesn't need to be super tight. And this one's going to be a little bigger. Um than the other one. It's going to a friend at the end of this, I believe. We're making a trade. So I better tie it good, because if he, you know, so he can't go back to the video and go, dude, you tied that horrible. So I'll lock my loop in, trim it off. Treble hooks only. Yeah. I used to have a fly that had treble hooks on it, like when. It was a rainbow trout pattern. I was getting schooled by a bunch of bass, and it was a big fly with a big treble hook on it. So I'm going to take, this is some ostrich. This is pretty cool ostrich. It's got these little dots on it. Um, and I'm going to take that, and we're going to kind of run these out the side here and create little wings or flippers. It also creates extra profile as well. I'll just lash all that down. I'm not worried about it. It's not too big. So like I said, you can you can tie these also with uh, you know other colors, other um, you know if you wanted to do sculpiny colors for summertime stuff like that probably work pretty darn well. I know that they've pressed a lot of this stuff back east and up north every, everywhere. So it's pretty darn cool. I'm going to uh, ad lib a little bit. We're going to put in some pink predator wrap. You guys have a break from the rain? Ours stopped for like two days, guy. And everything looks like a chocolate milk factory up here. It's pretty grim. So I would love for the rain to stop pumping for a little bit here. And I'm just going to tie in about half of this just to create a little bit extra. We're going to put a bigger front on this fly. <coughs> So next up is, uh, they kind of run these big, long, wide jungle cock creatures. Uh, eyes hanging out the side of it, which are pretty sweet. Most of my longer ones have some splits in it. So I'll try to get some less than split ones. If you guys ever need to, you can UV cure them back together as well. It's pretty, pretty nifty little trick if you push the splits together. Um, so I'll strip most of the fluff off or the dander. You can have it, Steve. I was supposed to go steelheading on the coast this weekend, and that's not gonna materialize. I've, I think we've had nine inches plus here since the beginning of the year, which is pretty substantial. kind of racing through these patterns tonight. Sorry guys, if you're wanting me to take a full hour of your life away from you. So these guys kind of come out, create this cool profile-y look. Now we get complicated. J. 
James says the uh, morning today, very wet in the past, is closed down. Are you? Where are you at, James? I saw uh, Snoqualmie Falls look like Niagara Falls today if you're up in the Washington area. That looked pretty wild. It was flooding in Chico <laughs> when you left. Yeah, it's... Uh, the Sacramento River in Redding is at 3,500 CSF right now. Um, and when you get down to the Red Bluff Chico area, I think it's bumped to almost 50K, if that gives you an idea of what the the feeder creeks are actually up to down there. So what I've done is I've pulled another dubbing loop, and this guy actually gets a once-over with a low-tax swax. Um, because we're putting a lot, a lot of stuff in here. Um, so we're putting in multiple materials. Jerry has dubbed this a composite loop, um, and he has his particular style um, that he's doing it. Uh, what's the normal flow? Oh, okay, I, I know exactly where you are. Um, I. I hang out in Marysville, James, uh, at least four times a year. I have a family house on the Tulalip Indian Reservation, so I, I've grown up there since uh, since I was born. I have lots of friends, actually, in uh, Everett. My mom grew up right next to the golf course, and they tore the house their their like childhood house down to make more room for the college. So kind of a small world. Uh, over two inches of rain today. Aaron asks, what's normal? Uh, normal flows this time of year for the sack, if there's no rain, Aaron, uh, is like 3250 to 3500 CSF. So it's normal in town up here. It's off-colored, but uh, down lower it's, it's pretty significantly flooded. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to try, I guess I'll just move this out of my way. I threw some of our silver holographic ice dub in there. Um, I'm just going to go down to the bench here. I can't really see what's going on, but oh no, I can. Um, so I'm going to take a little bit of our, of our lavender ice dub here. And this gets pinched out and realigned and I'll go ahead and distribute this down on to the bench here and next up for contrast we're going to use a kingfisher blue um, ostrich plume and it's a dotted ostrich plume and we're going to lay these fibers in here and then spin them into this dubbing loop as well So I'm going to take about an inch of ostrich here. And I like to space them out personally for myself just a little bit. You can lay them in there right on top of each other for like a one or two wrap. I want this to have a little bit more of a forward appearance to it because it is a bigger version. Um, this one's quite a bit longer than, you know, the other one was about three and a half inches. So. And if something gets out of whack there, you can just, don't try to go against the, the barbules. That never seems to work out. And I just build in, like a, I just fill it in really solid. It's kind of a really weird camera angle. Hopefully it looks pretty mellow for you guys to, you know, look at it. Then if we take some, uh, some pearl hue, take a pinch of that out as well, and this is going to build like a top. Two inches of rain in one day. You know, James, it was funny, I was up there visiting shops and stuff uh, this fall and doing what I do for work, which is visit all the shops on the west coast um, with Loon 
and uh, we were at the Avid Angler there, and they were like, yeah, you should go fish the sky tomorrow. And they were like, oh, wait, it's going to bump. I looked at it in the morning, and it went from, like, 6,000 or 4,000 CSF up to, like, 80, and it was ridiculous. Um, so the cool thing is, is once you've got this done, you can kind of just pick this up, and you can see it molds together. I'll try to, uh, I'm going to lift the camera angle so you can see what I do here first. So this will be a weird multi-part event. Alright, cool. We're not even close, but now that I have this weirdness in my hand here, um, what you're going to want to do is you open up your dubbing loop and just kind of jam all this stuff in there. And now I'll go ahead and work on centering this. Dude, they're crazy. My wife like took them away and they came back with a vengeance as you can hear. My son's two and he just learned to talk so there's no chance of him ever not talking um, or yelling or fighting with his sister. So now when, when Jerry ties these, he, he leaves all the stems in um, because we have that, that swax on there. I feel pretty comfortable with trimming off my butt ends for the length that I want. I can come in here and space out this holographic as well. Um, and I'm just going to put a real, real light spin on this. Um, I don't want to trap any of the tips. I am going to go back in there and thoroughly abuse this. But you can see I'm just really working at keeping all the tips out as best as possible. At least they're not at the top of the stairs though, Aaron. That's the worst. My daughter will think that I'll need something and try to bring it um, to me during like filming or something like that because I film a lot during the day so it has its ups and downs why am I talking to myself I don't know I have bad habits of that <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and pick this out Yeah, I'm, I may have done this once before. I watched a video and, and stayed at a, a few places that, uh, you know, last night, what is it, the Holiday Inn. So, so cool. Now we have this big brush, and as you can see, we transition from this silver ice dub section into the main front of our pattern here. And I just lick my fingers to get this going but you can I'll hold it by the thread typically whenever I do dubbing loops and that way um, if you guys ever watch Jerry's video on Vimeo it's pretty cool he talks about driving the dubbing loop you can rotate it to get it to go pretty much where you want it to get it to do what you want it to um, you know when once I get my silver holographic in there, I'll take a second, drive that brush back up top. Sometimes things will get kind of maybe a little bit caught. Catch the hook with your, so you just got to kind of keep working at it. I'm just brushing backwards. Keep it out of the thread. No, I gotta do this like all. I gotta tie steelhead flies all night tonight. I gotta make a. I gotta make a, a drop tomorrow morning. 
So it's cool if you want to you know spread this pattern out a little bit, you can do that, which is what I've done tonight. Um, or if you want to keep it extremely tight, tight like the, the the model that I showed you, it's always good to keep your regal revolution real nice and tight. Um, you can do that as well. Um, so it's a extremely versatile pattern. You can see I'm just putting a ton of torque down on that. And that's just to suck that the thread in behind that bead in that dubbing loop. And let's throw a little whip in there. Really. This is where you hook yourself, right, Aaron? When you really wrenching on that. The only thing I'm gonna banish my son, he's in a bad mood down there sassing mom up so everything in this fly I want it all you know if it's falling out right now that's fine I don't want it to fall out when we're on the in the water so I'm gonna take a little bit of flow and let that soak down in up front and then I'll zap it And again, I just go in there and, I mean, really thrash on this fly. Thrash on all the materials. Make sure it's going to stay nice and tight in there. Dig in there. If you have a brush or, you know, any type of uh, creature, go ahead and attack it thoroughly. And if everything looks kind of willy-nilly and uh, whatnot, that's, that's fine. Don't... Uh, Thanks, Brandon. <laughs> yes, I'm going to have time for a Helgramite after this. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. You just got to really just dig on stuff. Um, I don't think people thrash on their flies enough. So, the hook I'm using is a, it's, it's a pretty cool hook. It's OPST's hook. And uh, this is called the swing hook. Uh, I'll show you it. It's, it's almost like a pseudo... It's, it's a half breed between an octopus and a circle hook. So even if you guys are like streamer junkies um, and you like tying like articulated stuff like with rabbit strip tails, it's a good hook. Um, this one is a size 4, but you can get them, you know, into beast mode size. Um, so what I'm going to do is this is kind of... I'm going to get rid of the shank. Now you guys can cut these, but if I abuse my vise a little bit, which is probably not the best thing, but um, I'll get rid of that right there. Kind of push all this stuff up out of the way. And so I'll get my, my pick in here, or my bodkin in here. And what I'll do is I'll throw a half hitch in. So I already have a single loop. I'm going to throw a twist and a half hitch. And I'm going to bring this loop back up top. And this is a pretty cool little little trick here. So if you guys, I'm trying to figure out the best way. Did I get rid of my weed guard? Yes, I got rid of the weed guard. There was no weed guard. You don't weed guard steelhead flies. Aaron, goof. There's no weeds. Now, if there was like a way to boulder proof them, I lose more of these things that it takes me half an hour to tie on rocks than probably anything else. So this is something I picked up by watching Jerry tie. So you can see, if you guys can see right here, I have my loop is sitting right here. And what I'll do is when I figure out the point to where I'll cinch it down. Oops, pull a little ostrich out of there. And now that hook is married to that rabbit strip. If it doles out, dig it right back out. And uh, 
goes from there. So you can replace that hook still. You always want to leave at least enough room to replace the hook on these flies. That's and that's about as much room as I'd like to that I'll ever leave on a steelhead pattern. Just cuz if you know if you have it your your hook hanging way back out here at the tail end of this whatever it may be. I've seen fish hooked in the eyes. I've seen fish short strike, you know, or over strike it. And you can miss fish if it's a little bit too far out of the meat district if you will but now that it's on a now that it's on the uh, shank you can see there's there's not a lot of actual shank here so we'll do a rotation with my hand so and then we'll tie a bunch of helgramites for Aaron maybe if I put it in the vise that might be weird no it's not gonna work maybe it will so yeah that's my that's my my little quick you know that's that's a little bit long. We can trim this guy down just a hair. Just take about a quarter inch, half inch off. So it's just my little quick elongated dirty hoe. So so next week it's it's open, guys. Um, it's open for the next episode for what you want. So if you have something, if you want to see a little tiny, let's see if we can get on this little tiny guy. Whoop, a little too close. And now it's covered with dirty hose stuff. Um, so if you want to see a little cat skill <laughs> stuff, Oh, I I don't swear anymore. I have uh, if I showed you my intruder box, Steve, you would understand. Uh, Ray Bergman timeless trout flies. I'm writing this down. I'm writing this down, James. I will research that and see what that what that uh, would entail. Um, if you can use unicorn tears, I'm on it. Um, but yeah, no, that sounds great. I will, uh, I will look into some Ray Bergman patterns. It sounds fun. I like that. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Peasworth. Matt, thank you. Um, so yeah, I think, uh, I think next week we'll get into, uh, a few more, some more trouty stuff as we're gonna start trying to see March Browns here pretty soon. I could okay. That I guess I can do that. If as long as Matt's good, I'll I'll email with Matt and get the recipe from him and I'm pretty sure I've seen a picture. <laughs> it's probably too complicated for me though. I know Matt. It's it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> so yeah, we'll do uh that sounds fun. Um Cool, cool. Yeah, I will, uh, I will do that for you, James, and then Aaron, you asked for it. Sounds like I'm going to have to stock up on my bruiser blend if, uh, if I can get the recipe. Otherwise, I'll just hatchet job one together. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, so if any of you guys are in the Sacramento area tomorrow at the ISE show, it would be awesome to see you, um, stuff like that. There is some big news, but it's West Coast news. Um, so I was talking to... <laughs> I was talking to Cheech and Curtis from Fly Fish Food. Uh, yeah, I might have to try, tie it, <laughs> pry it out of him. Um, talking to Cheech and Curtis from Flyfish Food, and it sounds like we are teaming up at the Loon Booth at the Northwest Fly Fishing Show in Albany in March. Um, and the other thing that we're doing is uh, I'm doing uh, three days of tying at the Fly Fishing Show in Pleasanton. So if you guys are out that way again, I'll give you more info about that as it gets closer. That's like two loon lives from now. I don't expect you to remember any of that. But uh, 
so yeah, we'll do some Ray Bergman stuff and uh, maybe some Matt Ebers, Ebbs Force 81 flies. That sounds really fun. I like, uh, I've been meaning to tie some, uh, some variations of those cool articulated patterns, but uh, I think that, that sounds good. It's a good project for me to work on. I like it. As always, guys, I appreciate you tuning in, and hopefully we see you here in a few weeks if we don't float away from all the water that we're going to get. Um, Ebbs Force 1. That's right. <laughs> 1. 1. What did I say? I'm retarded. Sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, you're going to be in Bishop. I would like to be in Bishop also. Um, I've heard it's really been fishing well, Steve. So, alrighty guys, I'm going to tune out, go wrangle, wrangle up some uh, wild beasts and get ready for a three hour drive tomorrow for my event. Dennis, take care man, I appreciate you tuning in. Aaron, thank you for your heckling, as always. <laughs> I, have something, I do have something special for you here, just, there it is, that's for you Aaron. The Peacock Ice Dub. It's front and center. Um, right on, Steve. Matt, we'll see you soon. Brent, ciao. All right, guys. We're going to tune out. We'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.